Hi, I'm Matt. I'm here in Michigan. And I'm Randall, here in Texas. This week, we're going to do The Mandalorian, the first live-action Star Wars series. There's going to be a little bit of spoilers throughout. We're not going to go super in-depth, but watch out for those spoilers. Matt, being a big Star Wars fan, looking forward to The Mandalorian in a previous film, what did you think of it? I actually really like The Mandalorian. It is not what I was expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be maybe a little bit more adult, but I should have known better because it is on Disney Plus and it's kid friendly. Yeah, I, I genuinely enjoyed most of the show. I have some nitpicks with some of the things about it, but as a whole, the show does a lot of good for the Star Wars universe. A lot of uh, correction, kind of, almost from what you get in the big budget movies. Now you were saying when we looked at Disney Plus a few weeks ago um, that you really were interested in seeing it mostly because of Dave Filoni. Can you just pick out something on there that's just like, hey, that's Dave Filoni for us? A lot of them was a callback, a big spoiler at the at the end, the big reveal of the Dark Saber. If people don't know about the Dark Saber, you can go look it up, but that's something Dave Filoni had in both Clone Wars and in Star Wars Rebels. Um, but I don't know, just the general feel, I would say there's certain episodes that definitely feel, felt like Filoni episodes. The first one felt like a Filoni ep episode, I guess just in like tone and all around structure of the episode. Yeah, with Dave Filoni and, and John Favreau running the show, I, I felt like it was it was in good hands people who are fans of Star Wars people who really are pretty good at at universe building John Favreau obviously with Iron Man previously to this um so I, I want to talk a little bit about what I really enjoyed and that was the atmosphere they they did a really good job of setting up what was a believable Star Wars atmosphere especially post empire um all of the stormtroopers, for the most part, are really dirty. Their uniforms are not well kept. They're being pushed to the fringes. You know, they they have to hide. The Empire and the Imperial slugs that they are all have to hide in this movie, or not movie, television series. Um, and I like that. Like all of the little touches that they put in. You can call me Stregs if you want. I thought were really really good. It was a little interesting near the end when the shiny the shiny troopers show up. Because you're like, oh, wow, these ones are these ones are different than what we had seen. These are well-kept troopers in comparison to what we had seen previously. Yeah, I would totally agree. I think with a TV show as opposed to movies, movies, I think, try to push the overall story forward. And something like a TV show, as long as you get, like, the atmosphere, like, the locales and everything correct, you can do different stuff with the story to make it actually you know, feel connected. So I totally agree. I, I like the feeling of it, that post-Empire. And like you said, you get the, the dirty, grungy stormtroopers, you know, and the little pockets, the like the, I guess, the little local uh, leaders and stuff, remnants of the Empire. And then, as you say, the shiny, the people that are more higher up, you know, Moff Gideon stormtroopers are a bit, bit more well-kept and stuff. He's got a little bit more money behind him. So... I'm happy you kind of brought up Moff Gideon. So Moff Gideon doesn't really show up until the second to last episode, and even then at the very end. And he's fairly prominent if you go back and watch the trailers. So one of the things, if I have a, a small criticism, is I, I didn't really like the pacing of the season, but first seasons can be rough. So as a first season, this was really well done. But I kind of thought for, for a, a little bit it was meandering. It wasn't really getting on with the story. And then the last two episodes just explode into a lot happens, a lot of action happens, a lot's going on, and finally the story's really progressing. Yeah, and, you know, uh, Moff Gideon, like you said, we don't see him until the last two episodes. There's quite a few characters that, you know, you kind of see in the trailers and stuff leading up to the series, and we don't see until, like, later in, like, Cara Dune, I don't think we see her till what, the maybe fourth the episode? fourth episode, yeah. which I would say of all the episodes, to me, that one was the the least was... strong or whatever. Yeah, uh, I felt like I had seen that before. I'm like, oh, you know, goes in and rescues the, the natives, quote-unquote, 
Um, Helps the town fight for themselves yeah. kind of thing. Yes, trains them. So you have the Magnificent Seven who who does that. There's a there's an old episode of Star Trek Enterprise where they help the people fight off Klingons. You know, they train them up and set up booby traps and everything. So I felt like, oh, that was a retread. It wasn't very original. But Cara Dune's character, she's she's pretty awesome. I'm like, okay, it's kind of like what you saw with Rogue One. You have the ground troops, like the, the rebel ground troops, and that's what she was. She was Alliance uh, shock trooper, you know? So her her character is awesome, but I agree that that episode's probably the weakest, in my opinion. Now they, not only just the story being one that we've seen over and over again in, in different mediums and stuff, but also I think it it almost felt like a movie in, like, an episode. Like, everything have, they have to go through, like, a lot to, like, train them and everything. So to me, it kind of felt like a movie that was compacted into uh, a single episode. And given that these episodes are not overly long, some of them are only 30-some minutes, and that's including the credits, it, it was a lot to ask. Now, on the flip side of that, though, it's the third to last episode, uh, so like episode five or six or whatever, where Mando is with his old gang, so to say, as it is. Um, I thought that was great. They were infiltrating a uh, prison barge to get a prisoner out and of course he's you know <laughs> backstabbed and then he gets them back that for me was the strongest standalone episode it didn't move the story forward any which was again my biggest complaint is how is pacing but that episode of them just doing what they do was really fun to watch i totally agree that one i think is my favorite episode as well it has that old kind of like Western feel, like you said, breaking someone out of jail, or almost kind of like the train heist kind of yeah. kind of feel to it too. Uh, a lot of these episodes, I, I would agree, they either give you some more backstory on who the Mandalorian is, or it just uh, adds to the kind of thing that hey, they're not safe. Him and the child, who everyone knows as Baby Yoda, <laughs> Baby Yoda. it's not Yoda that we know of but i think disney's official said it's not yoda but it's either to show that you know the mandalorian's backstory or to kind of like add to that like hey people are always on their heels they're not safe you know no matter where they go yeah so of course we cannot do a mandalorian season one review without talking about the internet sensation that is baby yoda or baby whatever it is Obviously, it's the same species as Yoda, and, and not very many people realize what they are. You know, you can go around the Star Wars universe and say, oh, that's that kind of alien, or that's that kind of alien. But Yoda's species is so rare that no one knows what it is. And it's been so long since anyone saw one that no one really knows what it is. And I like this. This is juxtaposition to what we saw in our Episode Nine review where these characters who aren't like in the core story they're still kind of if he's like oh he can move things with his mind and they don't call it the force you know they're just like there's something weird about this little child yeah i mean i i liked the reveal of baby yoda it was something i was not expecting at all and to have that dropped right at the end of the first episode and then it's kind of setting up it's interesting what are we going to see in season two? You saying, hey, you know, we don't know the where they come from, like what the species is. And his task is to find his race or whatever, people of his kind, if, you know, they're out there kind of thing. So it'll be interested to see if they are going to introduce that, you know, in Star Wars or if they're going to find, you know, some other place that, that Baby Yoda is going to end up. It's It's interesting. It goes against so much of what George Lucas wanted, which is true of pretty much everything that Disney has done with Star Wars. George Lucas was very anti-exploring Yoda's race. He's he's like, I think he described Yoda as like the stranger who comes and goes, basically. So, something akin to that. So to actually get information about it is a little bit of fan service because the fans wanted to see it and George was just adamant about saying no. Um, but as far as what they've done so far in The Mandalorian, they've handled it much better than they have the, the prequels. Or sorry, not prequels, the sequel trilogy. 
Yep, I, I agree with that. There, that's the thing, too. It's it's wondering, we'll see if they actually do go that or or if, you know, something else. Maybe that's just a little tidbit. There's a lot of little, like, tidbits that's like, all right, is this going to lead to something? I mentioned the Darksaber. Is that going to lead to something? Um, and one of the episodes, I think it was episode five, where it's the young bounty hunter that turns on the, the Mando, and at the end, the assassin they're going for who's dead, there's some some person, mysterious person that walks up, who a lot of people were speculating, maybe that's Boba Fett or something, or some no. other Mandalorian or whatever. So we'll see, are, are these things going to go Fett's someplace dead. or not? Boba Fett's been dead since episode six. <laughs> He's dead. Yep. Stupid, stupid <laughs> character's dead. I don't want to hear about Boba Fett. I don't want to see Boba Fett. I d dead. <laughs> Well, that's the thing, too. I think people have said in season two we may see some older characters, but I like it without. I like, you know, just new characters, you know. Moff Gideon, new character. Like, uh, you know, so far we've just seen new characters, and I've enjoyed that. I don't think we really need to go, you know, to other uh, already established characters. Yes, I I, I agree. Um, so I want to I wanna talk a little bit about the last episode. It's uh, probably the most bombastic episode. Uh, as I was watching it, a lot happens. Baby Yoda's in the hands of uh, a couple of uh, biker troopers, and they have a great scene at the beginning. I don't want to spoil that, but the episode is practically worth it for that by itself, and there's cameos in, in there for, of those two troopers. But um, uh, so much happens in the last episode, and it's again, it's fairly short. It's only about 40 minutes long. Um, but there was a thing about it that was weird to me and it took me a little bit to get into the episode because I felt that this episode seemed as though it was a fan film a very well done fan film at first I'm like oh you have all these stormtroopers and as per usual they can't hit the broadside of a barn and they're just going down like mad I'm like well I guess I still don't have to be afraid of stormtroopers <laughs> but yes and then you mentioned uh, at the very end Moff Gideon and the Darksaber, which goes back as far as uh, Clone Wars. And and I think, um, this is just a prediction, I, had, I don't know this, I think that probably Moff Gideon was once a Mandalorian. Um, potentially even the Mandalorian who picked up Mando and, and took him off. I don't know that for a fact, that's just me speculating. Because where's the Darksaber last time we saw it in Rebels? It's uh... Spoilers for anyone who haven't watched Rebels. Last time we see it, uh, Sabine Wren had it, and she actually gave it to, I think it's uh, Satine's younger sister. That is the last that, that I remember where we see the Darksaber. So how it gets out of her hands into Moff Gideon's hands, we'll see. Well, in the Clone Wars, you see that the Darksaber plays a big role in one of the story arcs there. I'm, again, it's all speculation. I'm just guessing. But I'm I'm pretty sure that, that Moff Gideon you'll find was once a Mandalorian and he has it unless unless the dark saber is just uh, just comes from the the besiege the siege of of Mandalore itself and the Empire just has it. But that would be far less interesting to do with the character. Yep, I I agree. We'll see. Like I said, a lot of these little tidbits of the you know open for season two to get Star Wars fans speculating and excited for what comes next. And that's good. That's fine. You want to have your fan base excited and speculating. That's that's what Game of Thrones did. Week after week, it was like, "Ooh, hey, what's gonna happen? Who's gonna who's gonna die next?" You know, you need that, and that's what you didn't have with the sequel trilogy. There was, you know, after episode eight, a bunch of people were like, "I guess those questions don't matter." <laughs> uh, so there wasn't a whole bunch of speculation. So this does it better. The Mandalorian does it better. I didn't like the pacing, but I loved the environment. I loved the the cinematography. The music took a little bit to grow on me, but finally it got there. I was like, okay, this is good. So, absolutely, if especially if you're a Star Wars fan, you've probably already seen it. But even if you're not, it's just a fun, interesting story. It's a good sci-fi story to watch. So I would recommend watching it. I think especially if you're a fan of kind of like the old westerns. When I was watching every episode, I was looking at the characters and the sets and stuff. I'm thinking like, all right, if this had been a western, how would it look? How would these characters be? You're talking about the two scout 
troopers or the bad shooting scout troopers or whatever, you know, not to get into too many spoilers, but to me, I kind of saw them as, you know, part of like that, the gang that, you know, it's kind of like push the side all, you know, there are grunts, we have them run and do different stuff, but they're really not all that skilled. I mean, I know a lot of people in the 501st stuff were talking about how the scout troopers knee pads are actually on upside down in this. So, you know, I don't think Lucasfilm did that, you know, uh, by mistake or whatever. It's probably to show that these are, you know, the top of the line scout <laughs> troopers for the, the previous Empire. To be fair, even the top of the line ones weren't that good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is that fun little scene where they're just... <laughs> I guess target practice. Um, it's in the last episode. It's right at the beginning. It's hilarious to watch. So there's a really good chance that um, before season two comes out, we're probably going to do a season two predictions because they're going to be releasing some stuff. So definitely look out for that. Make sure to catch our reviews of episode nine, either spoiler free and or the spoiler review. I'll make sure to post some links for you guys. And if you like this content, make sure that you give us a like on the video or give us a subscribe or both. For now, I'm Randall in Texas, signing off. I'm in Michigan. Thanks for joining us.